In this video, we demonstrate the process of creating a LucidView bolt-on enforcer on the LucidView portal. Now, before we can do this, we need to understand the difference between the two types of enforcers that can be created by the LucidView portal and the differences between them, as well as the necessary background knowledge in order to build these enforcers. Now, the first type of enforcer that LucidView portal can create is a standard enforcer. Now the standard LucidView enforcer is an enforcer created on a Microtech with factory default settings on it. So the idea is to create a standalone appliance that one can ship to a client that they can use by default without having to understand the intricacies of configuring Microtech root array scripts. The other enforcer is a LucidView bolt-on enforcer, and that is the type of enforcer we'd like to discuss in this video. The LucidView bolt-on enforcer adds the LucidView portal scripts to a Microtech in a production environment. This means the Microtech has already been configured and it's already carrying your traffic um, to and from your clients to the internet. And the portal will then generate a script which can be installed on the Microtech, uh, allowing it to do DNS content filtering and firewall-based content filtering, as well as very detailed reporting on the portal. Now, in order to build a standard enforcer or a bolt-on enforcer, there are some detailed instructions, and we do recommend that you read these instructions to get a better understanding of how to configure the Microtech. But the important bits to understand is how to modify Microtech configurations, how to uh, script on Microtechs with Router OS. Um, it doesn't have to be in a tremendous amount of detail, but it is necessary to have a basic understanding of how to connect to Microtechs, how to run scripts, change scripts, and also to change Microtech configurations. But it is assumed that if the Microtech is in a production environment, that the, uh, that the engineer is capable of configuring the basics of a Microtech. Now, in order to create a LucidView bolt-on enforcer, the first step is obviously to log into the reseller account created. Now, in, for the purposes of this demonstration, we've created a demo create enforcer reseller account and from this account, we will generate and build the scripts for a LucidView enforcer and then apply this to our little test Microtech in order to demonstrate the functionality. Now, the first step is obviously to view the enforcers. Now for a blank reseller, there will be no enforcers to view. And the first step will be to create an enforcer. Now the script does a number of things and we'll drill into a bit more detail a bit later as to what these things are. Um, but the script in essence creates a VPN to the LucidView cloud in order for the LucidView cloud to be able to talk to the uh, Microtech and send configurations back and forth. It also allows DNS traffic to be routed via the VPN as well as firewall block lists and white lists to be propagated from the cloud to the Microtech. The other thing that the VPN does is it allows the Microtech to send traffic flow data or net flow data to the LucidView cloud for detailed logging purposes. And this is what allows us to generate the very complex and detailed reports for the Microtech device. So the first step obviously is to enter the details of the Microtech router serial number. Um, also, you can use the virtual machine software ID if you are using a virtual machine. So obviously the enforcer can be created for a physical device or a virtual device. It doesn't matter. From our perspective, it's all the same. The DNS locale is important for the country that you're operating from. Uh, in this case, we'll choose the UK. And this is specifically relevant for updates so that updates can be sourced from the closest data center and uh, preferably not from another country if a local source is available. If you do know what the enforcer administrator email address is, it is an optional 
uh, field that you can add in order to pre-claim the device. And this is the person that will administer this enforcer device. Um, and it can either be the client or it can be the reseller. And then a friendly name is also recommended so that you can identify your device. And the UTC time zone offset, in our case, we'll just leave it as a UTC time zone offset of two. You can you either use auto or you can manually populate this field. And once you've completed all the entries, you can click create. Do note that the VPN IP address is for information purposes only. This is the IP address that you can expect to see on the enforcer once it has managed to connect to the LucidView cloud. So let's create this enforcer. Uh, you will notice there's some information. Uh, once uh, you, uh, in order to revise the choices, you will see my critic serial number is valid. The administrator email address that you've supplied is valid. You've pre-claimed this device with a valid email address. If it has not been pre-claimed, it will have to be claimed at a later stage in order to administer the device. And remote access will allow the administrator to log into the device and then the friendly name is valid. Let's continue. All right, now that we've created the Lucid Reinforcer, there are a number of things that we can see over here. The device serial number, in this case, not a real serial number. The LucidView unique identifier, that is a unique number to this enforcer generated by LucidView for this device. Uh, once this enforcer is deleted um, and you recreate it, a new LucidView unique identifier is created and it's always unique to an enforcer. There's the admin address, current monthly cost, which is obviously zero dollars. We only start charging monthly cost as soon as the device is online and generating traffic. Last update, demo site three, friendly name, bolt on. And over here, you can log on to the device itself. But instead of doing that, let's create our enforcer. The last option is download script. Now the download script will download a router OS script, which can be installed on the LucidView enforcer. The script configures the enforcer to talk to the LucidView cloud. Uh, here you go, there's a VPN username, VPN password. This is already in the script, which will be download, which can be downloaded. Let's generate. There's your unique, LucidV unique identifier, the password for the VPN. Very important here is to populate the MicroTik internal IP address. Now by default, the MicroTiks are configured with a network range of 192.168.88.0 slash 24. This is the default configuration of a MicroTik, but in a production environment, this is likely to be different. And that is the case for us. The MicroTik IP address of the MicroTik I'm using is 192.168.0.1. It is also my gateway to the internet. Uh, so it does simulate a production environment. There you can see a file has been created and has been downloaded to the to my hard drive. Now the next step is to modify the script according to your own requirements. So Opening up this script that we have generated on the LucidView portal, you will see there's a number of instructions inside the script. And all these steps are described um, and can be verified by you, but there's only a couple of places that really need to be checked if necessary. Uh, so the first step that this script does is allows this MicroTik to check in with an LTTP VPN into the LucidView cloud using the MicroTik uh, serial number and the lucid view unique identifier that's been created. Uh, next step for the script is it allows it to send NetFlow logs to the lucid view cloud via the VPN. It sends DNS logs to the lucid view cloud via the VPN. It performs a DNS intercept of all DNS traffic. And this is important if uh, users on the network override the DNS settings that have been supplied by the DHCP server, 
um, the DNS-based filtering will be rendered ineffective unless an intercept is placed uh, to intercept all the DNS traffic. Then the LucidView Enforcer portal is then used for all DNS requests uh, in the event that the VPN server is up. If the VPN server is down, then open DNS uh, servers on the internet are used for resolution. And in case there is a problem, the scripts will automatically switch to use the LucidView Open DNS resolvers. Uh, this is usually the case if the VPN server is down or, or a DNS resolution failure has occurred. And then the last op option that it enables, it allows the LucidView Cloud to update the firewall kill lists periodically. So in the script, we create firewall rules that uh, operate with address lists that can be populated from the LucidView Cloud. This happens automatically and does not have to be facilitated manually. Now the important components to look at Or the VPN user, that is the Lucid View Unique Identifier that's easily verified, 381D9837, which is the same as the file name, and it can be verified on the portal as well, as well as the password. Uh, the script should have populated this for you automatically. The next thing which is very important is the IP address which has been assigned, assigned to the MicroTik. Now, if this IP address has been assigned correctly on the portal, it will be populated correctly in the script and all the firewall intercept rules for DNS um, will then work appropriately and redirect DNS requests to your MicroTik. Now, the next step is once you've verified that you are happy with all the scripts, uh, all, the, all the functionality enabled in the script, and you're welcome to browse through it and see what, what functionality there is, uh, you can then apply this script to your uh, MicroTik. Now, there are some changes that might be recommended. For example, the script assumes that the internet-facing interface is Ethernet 1. Now, that is very often the case, but it is also often the case that one might find VLANs on the network uh, and a specific VLAN could also uh, be the gateway to the internet. It is also possible to have PPPoE interfaces and various and other interfaces that might need to be catered for. Uh, in this case, it's necessary to go through the script and just make sure that the script does not cause any problems um, for your local network configuration. Now, the next step is applying this configuration to your MicroTik. In order to apply the script to your MicroTik, you can do it piece by piece by copying every section from the script into your MicroTik terminal. That is the one method you can apply the configuration. Alternatively, you can upload the script and run the script on the MicroTik. Once the script has been uploaded, it is available to be run and we recommend running the script from the terminal. And in order to run this script that has been uploaded, one can simply import the script. Alternatively, you can also copy and paste the script section by section in order to test each, each piece uh, and its operation. So now the script is running and it is busy configuring the MicroTik in order to allow it to talk to the LucidView Cloud. And once the script has been run successfully and the VPN has been established, there will be a new interface created called LV Cloud. And one can see in this case, it has managed to connect to the LucidView Cloud portal. Now, a number of things to verify is, for example, the DNS intercept rules. Now, the two rules are created on the MicroTik. It's important to move them to a uh, reasonable position in order to intercept all DNS requests. Now, two rules are, have been created called LV Cloud, and you will notice most of the rules created will have a, an LV Cloud prefix. Um, 
Now, in order to do the DNS intercept, this rule looks for any UDP traffic to port 53, which is DNS, and the action is to destination that to the IP address of the Microtech, which has been defined on the LucidView portal and in the script. The same is done for TCP traffic, uh, but most of the DNS traffic will be found in UDP. Now, in a production environment, it might be necessary to move this further up in the list of rules. Uh, in our case, it's not necessary. It's clear that the DNS traffic is being intercepted. Another test to see if DNS is correctly functioning is to look at the DNS cache and to see that it is being populated by the DNS requests of the workstations. This indicates that DNS is being resolved by the LucidView cloud via the Microtik. Next test is also to verify that the LucidView cloud is being used for DNS resolution. Now do note the DNS server is specified as 1.1.1.1. This is important to note because 1.1.1.1 is an open DNS resolver on the internet. Now, this was designed in such a way that in the event of a catastrophic failure somewhere in the system, if the, uh, the VPN goes down, DNS resolution fails, and the fall fallback scripts do not remove this DNS server from the list, DNS will still function by allowing internet access to resolve on an open resolver on the internet. Our next thing to notice is dynamic servers below here. Now, these dynamic servers are populated by the ISP. Now, it's very important that these dynamic servers should not exist in the DNS servers. This is very important to verify, and this is modified under the DHCP client. This is only for production environments where the DHCP client for this Microtech uses the ISP DNS. So, in this case, do disable the use peer DNS functionality, otherwise DNS resolution will be incorrect. Only the LucidView cloud should be used. Also verify that the VPN DNS scheduler exists in the event that you do you want to use it. Now the DNS scheduler runs once every second and verifies that the LucidView VPN tunnel is up and connected to and that DNS resolution is possible and that it does this by doing a DNS resolution test on that IP address and make sure that the VPN is up. In the event that this fails the LucidView open resolvers are configured as the active DNS for this Microtech to ensure that internet access is never interrupted even in the event of an unlikely cloud interruption. And this is the basics of configuring and setting up a LucidView enforcer uh, from the LucidView cloud. One more thing worth noting is that it is important to update the version of your Microtech. And in this case, you will notice current firmware is at 3.41. Please do update your devices to the latest firmware to ensure that there are no interruptions in cloud activity. In future, LucidView will uh, bounce Microtics off the network that have vulnerable uh, versions configured, and specifically version 6.40.4, which is configured on this little HAP Lite or HAP Mini, this specifically is vulnerable uh, to some attacks and uh, will in future not be allowed on the network. So do update your Microtics. Uh, it is recommended that you might, might even schedule the, the updates automatically once every month or every few weeks.